The third millennium BC was a time of new, unique economic and political configurations in a part of the world that can be called Middle Asia. The regions between the Indus and Mediterranean bounded on the north by Bactria and Central Asia and on the south by the Arabian Gulf. This Middle Asian interaction sphere is made manifest in shared artifacts, including objects of trade and exchange, as well as artifact styles and design motifs. Mesopotamian sources add written documentation for some of the activities within this Middle Asian interaction sphere, especially the maritime trade in the Arabian Gulf, to which we can add the overland trade of Central Asia beyond to the Mediterranean world. Now we have spoken about economic and technological exchange between this vast zone, between the people of this vast zone and the civilizations in various presentations. But what Purcell says is this intercultural style or the sharing of motifs and designs shows that there might have been a unique and uniting ideology that connected the various people of all these lands. This is made coherent by various motifs such as humped bulls, other figurines, various lion-headed birds, or styles of representation of various deities, gods, goddesses, and even the rulers of all these lands. So while we see various cultural motifs, even literature and various other forms which are unique to these civilizations and which can only be found and were developed in them, we also see a much vaster spread out ideology, which was perhaps created by the interactions of common people, by traders, merchants, craftsmen, and this percolated in a sense into the art which was being created, remember by these artisans who were not from the aristocratic lineages. So this gives us an interesting insight into how culture was shared in this first age of civilizations, not just locally, but across this vast sphere from the Indus to the Mediterranean and including Central Asia, so the region that Purcell calls the Middle Asian interaction sphere. And we will also see that this interaction spread out into the Eastern Mediterranean world. And while in this presentation I don't really touch upon the cultures of Egypt and the cultures of the Mediterranean, we will see that through Northern Mesopotamia, through Mari, through Anatolia, there was a lot of cultural interaction in that direction as well. And this might be something that I explore in a deeper sense in an upcoming presentation in which we discuss the culture of the second millennium BC, which is fundamentally a time during which the Mediterranean world and the western half of this Indo-Mediterranean world system begins to dominate the culture and the trade. But for this, we are going to look at the art and the artifacts. And after this brief introduction, we are primarily going to have a visual presentation in which you can judge and see how this culture was shared and how this unique ideology of the Middle Asian interaction sphere was created, spread out across this entire arc. And remember, this is something that we will see again in the first millennium BC, that is in the mid first millennium BC, primarily with the rise of the Persian Empire and then with the Hellenistic Age after the conquests of Alexander. So these are patterns which continue to repeat and we will see that the foundation for these patterns was laid in this first age of civilizations or the first world system of the third millennium BC. So before we begin this presentation, a word about the sponsor of this video, which is Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN has about 6 million subscribers and it is one of the top rated VPN service providers. Now speaking from personal experience, I have only recently begun using VPN for my research. I used it for other things like unlocking content and protecting my privacy online. But using VPN services to access news from different locations in the world is really a game changer. Now if you access your news online, whether it is on certain websites where content is blocked based on locations, or if you use an aggregator such as Google, you don't really get a raw perspective unless you are using VPN. So for instance, say I want a particular perspective about a certain geopolitical development, say in a country, say in Southeast Asia. Now I am not going to be able to get that perspective if I search on Google News. I will get back results which are tailored to my search history and of course tailored to my location. But if I use VPN, if I change my location to that country, not only will I get raw results from that country, I also have no search history because of the services provided by VPN, which prevents tracking. So I get this really raw information and raw news, which is really, really important for me as a researcher for international relations and international developments. And like I said, this is a game changer. 
So Atlas VPN is giving us a discount. It is giving us VPN services for $1.99 a month for three years. And of course, the first month is free. So I highly suggest using this offer, take the services at least for a month, try it out and try it out in the way that I'm suggesting. And really it does open up your world. So with that, we return to the video. So what Bussell then argues is that this intercultural style shows that the participants or the actors in this exchange shared not just these symbols, but possibly also some ideology which underlay these symbols or some philosophy of the forms that this art began to take. And this might have been a syncretic form of belief which brought together symbols from all over this world of ancient civilizations, primarily through the action of traders and merchants and perhaps even craftsmen who began to settle in different cities and different places. And from this participation, a shared ideology or a form of unity began to emerge. And this fact is documented from the earliest stages of interaction in the 5th millennium BC, in fact, even from 3000 BC, from 3200 BC, down till 2300 BC and 2000 BC, where of course we see a systemic breakdown in the Great War of Civilizations. What revived after this Great War was a fragmentation between the Western and the Eastern half of the system. So there was more interaction based around Egypt in the Eastern Mediterranean and West of Mesopotamia. And there was another cultural interaction sphere ranging from Central Asia down to the Iranian highlands and into Northern India. But that is for the future. So the rest of this presentation is primarily going to be visual and I will allow the art and artifacts to speak for themselves. Now I have curated this from different sources in such a way so as to show the commonalities, not just in the shared materials which are brought to various places where they are crafted into these artifacts, but also the underlying technology and methods. So for example, if you need to combine an artifact which includes gold, other forms of metal, with shells, with lapis lazuli, you need to integrate knowledge from different regions and different specializations. And often the only way to do this is to invite craftsmen from different places to settle in your lands. Now we have evidence from Sumerian seals that craftsmen from the Indus Valley were settled in Sumerian cities. We have material evidence that craftsmen from the Indus region were settled in the Gulf. And of course, there is tremendous evidence that craftsmen from Mesopotamia itself were wandering all around the region and were perhaps visiting cities in Iran, visiting cities in northern Mesopotamia, in Syria, where there was also cultural exchange between Anatolia and this northern Syrio-Mesopotamian world. So this culture was spreading through the movement of people who often don't leave a written record. All they leave for us is their art. And as you will see in a lot of cases, this art is quite outstanding and perhaps unmatched in some cases even till our day. So before I close my introductory remarks, which have already gone on longer than I expected, I should mention that this trade was not just in luxury products, but gradually also other products like cloth, building material, manufacturing materials, and necessities such as wood and different types of grains for planting and different animals for domestication, especially the Zebu buffalo from the Indus region was transported and rehabilitated in different lands. So this was a trading system which affected all the people right from the kings to the common people. And the record is left for us to see in the material culture of these great civilizations. And as you see these artifacts, you might even recognize some of these motifs which continue to be adopted and adapted to different forms of artistic representation in certain civilizations and cultures till the present day. So that is something that I will leave for you to judge and to see and to explore further. Finally, what we should learn from this is that the world of the third millennium BC was the foundation in a lot of ways for the many processes which continue to operate till our times. And what we see in the various successive eras of world history is fundamentally an upscaling and intensification of these processes from the first age of civilizations. And in a sense, it could be said that our globalized world of today has been 5,000 years in the making. Now, we have explored these formative processes in a lot of detail in various other lectures. We have explored the beginnings of the movement and settlement of people in different lands. 
but explored the interaction of different types of societies, moving societies, and settled societies. We've explored the beginning of trade networks and the development of these trade networks, leading to certain technological revolutions in different lands. And this lecture, in a sense, or this presentation, ties everything together. So we should understand this was a complete world system in which there was political, economic, social, cultural, ideological interaction, in addition to interaction in terms of diplomacy, war and peace. So this was a total international system. And to understand the geopolitical processes in the world today, we have to take a long look at the deep history of civilizations. Because there are no breaks in history, these breaks are only made by historians. We have to understand that civilization is one continuous process which began then and which is continuing till our age. And whether or not it will continue into the future, well, that is for us to see and perhaps be responsible for. So from this section onwards, we are going to move to a visual style presentation. I will show you different artifacts from across the region, the greater Mesopotamian region, and there will be short subtitles which will allow you to draw interconnections. And this is a carefully curated set of artifacts showing these interrelations. So I hope you enjoy this presentation and watch till the end because there is a lot to reveal, not just interconnections from Greater Mesopotamia, from the Eastern Mediterranean world, but also from Bactria Margiana, the Oxus civilization and the Indus Valley civilization, showing how cultural influences spread across this entire region. And now we turn to the presentation.